So about a year ago, Newcastle United became the richest club in world football. Nearly 10 months later, they've gone from asking how they're going to escape the relegation zone to having Eddie Howe as a manager. They've gone from asking the Pope for help to having Nick Pope between the posts. Over the last year of football, Newcastle United have totally turned a new leaf. But of course, the big question is how far can they take it this season? Of course, ladies and gentlemen, that's exactly what we're going to be talking about today. As Newcastle United, currently three games into the Premier League, they've just drawn 3-3 with Manchester City and they look like a totally new team compared to last season. I mean if you look at them last season they went their first 14 games of the season without a single win. Now of course yes I know it'd be absurd to say Newcastle United could compete for European football after just three games but looking at them there's a whole new different kind of energy if you'd like to say that. There's a whole new kind of hope and feeling to this Newcastle United team. Once again yes they brought in some brilliant players. They've currently been linked to Alexander Isaac for 70 million euros. Once again, imagine telling a Newcastle United fan about a year ago that they would get a player like him. Hey yo, what the fuck? Once again, this Newcastle United team has a whole new feeling to it and it would be interesting to see what they can achieve this season. Now, of course, guys, I do want you to put down in the comment section down below, how far do you guys think Newcastle United will make it this season? Do you think they'll reach a European spot or do you think they're all just overhyped and they won't even make top 10? Once again, as I said, I think Newcastle United could achieve some really good things this season. And I mean, could they potentially even win a trophy via the EFL Cup, via the FA Cup? Once again, we're going to be covering all of those things in today's video. Once again, and as I said, I think the big talking point is the fact that they've been linked to 22-year-old Swedish striker Alexander Isaac, who once again, I think this would be, uh, let me say, the missing puzzle piece for Newcastle United, or dare I say, the missing slice of the pie for the Magpies, because looking at Alexander Isaac, once again, 22 years old, so high potential, they're also linked to the likes of Xiao Pedro from Watford. Once again, if they're able to get two strikers like that and for the club, it would be instrumental, it would be vital to the future of this club. Now, of course, don't get me wrong, of course, they do have a brilliant striker with Callum Wilson, but unfortunately, once again, he has been one of those players that has been slightly too injury prone for the club. Over his last two or so seasons for the club, he's missed a total of 35 games games due to injury. I was born with glass bones and paper skin. Every morning I break my legs and every afternoon I break my arms. <laughs> Which once again if you look at things in perspective that's essentially missing an entire season of Premier League football. They do need a player who's going to be in on more of a regular basis, not Chris Wood, because although Chris Wood was brought into this club and was has been the only attacking player brought into Newcastle since the takeover, once again, they do need someone way more clinical up front and dare I say, world class. Looking at this Newcastle United team, they are that attractive club that can bring in absolutely, I would say almost anyone in the entire world. Obviously, since the takeover, since the money, since the growth and improvement of this club, I truly believe that Newcastle United could bring in almost anyone in the world. I mean, looking at some of the signings they've made over, what, the last 10 or so months of football, I mean, they've brought in the likes of, obviously, Eddie Howe as a manager, who I will admit I wasn't initially a big fan of. I thought, what could Eddie Howe achieve? He got Bournemouth relegated. But once again, he's done an absolutely brilliant job. I mean, since the beginning of January 2022, he's gotten more points with Newcastle United than Manchester United have gotten points. In fact, they went from not winning their first 14 games of the Premier League last season and ending up in 11th place just nine points behind Manchester United. So of course over the last year of football easily being I would say the most improved club over a calendar year. Once again the big question is can they bridge that gap? Can they make that gap smaller or even break in to the top six? As I said in terms of players that they've brought in once again although they haven't quite been spending the amount of money that I think lots of people thought that they would they've brought in some brilliant players for some really good fees. I mean they've brought in Nick Pope who once again an England international regular. 46 clean sheets in 100 and what, 48 or something Premier League games or 144 Premier League games. Nick Pope is a Premier League proven striker and has already gotten two clean sheets for the Magpies. Once again, players like that in the long run will be crucial to this Newcastle United team. They've also brought in the likes of Sven Botman, 22-year-old, excellent young centre-back, one of the highest potential centre-backs in world football at the moment. And can you once again imagine Newcastle United last season being told that they'll get a player like him when he 
he's been linked to what Manchester City when he's been linked to Liverpool for Newcastle United to get a player like him it is absolutely gigantic obviously also getting a player like Matt Target for example I know a lot of people are going to say that he's not necessarily world class but for him to move from Aston Villa to Newcastle United and let's not forget the season after he moved to Newcastle United or before he moved he was Aston Villa's player of the season once again huge signing you get the likes of Dan Byrne who once again I didn't expect to him to have the impact that he's currently had but he's played almost every single Premier League game for Newcastle United since he signed for them I mean even to say the fact that Eddie House played him as a left back when given the opportunity shows how much a player like Dan Byrne has really meant to Newcastle obviously Kieran Trippier probably being the biggest signing for the club or at least one of the biggest signings once again as I said and really shows the attraction of a club like Newcastle United. I mean, he just won La Liga with Atletico Madrid. Once again, he wanted a new challenge and he could really see something at Newcastle United, easily becoming the club's first major signing. Obviously, probably the biggest signing of this new era of football being Bruno Guimaraes, which, which once again, as a defensive midfielder, he has been insane for the club. I mean, a defensive midfielder, five goals, one assist. Obviously, he's really revolutionized that midfield position for Newcastle United. And with what, eight signings that I've just mentioned, I'm sure they've made one or two other ones on top of that. Once again, they've totally changed that club. And I just believe that adding a new striker like Alexander Isaac, once again, that might just be the missing piece. I believe if you have a top quality striker up front that can play with a player like Alan Saints Maximin, I think we could really see a deadly team here. I mean, just watching Manchester City versus Newcastle United. I thought Newcastle United, they were brilliant. Yes, they were 3-1 ahead, which that by itself is a huge achievement. And although they ended up drawing the game 3-3, I feel like a lot of people are going to question the fact that maybe they switched off. Maybe they don't have the correct mentality, which at the end of the day, let's not forget. It is a Pep Guardiola Manchester City team. And let's be honest, it could happen to anyone Manchester City are a totally different animal but the fact that over the last what three months I think Newcastle United have gone from losing 5-0 to Man City to gaining a point out of it once again it is a huge improvement for the club they don't have to take giant leaps they didn't have to beat Man City this time around but all they had to do was show improvement as I said heading into the season just a bare minimum would be a top 10 spot. I think if they really push, they could get 8th, they could get 7th. I think that they could really challenge for a European spot. As I said, at the end of the day, all they need is a top quality striker. And if you can get Alexander Isaac, only 22 years old, and you could have him for what, 4 or 5 years, that would be huge for the club. I know a lot of people are going to question whether he's got the right quality for the Premier League. Obviously, looking at him last season, he wasn't brilliant in the Liga. I think he only ended up getting 6 goals in 32 games. But let's not forget before that, at just the age of what? 2021 he got 17 goals in 34 uh, La Liga games once again he's kind of shown on multiple occasions that he does have the quality to make a really good striker we obviously watched him in the Euros obviously about two years ago once again Alexander Isaac he will be a brilliant striker one day and as I said if you add him to a Premier League team that's got a lot of potential to them I think although yes it is a gamble 70 million euros it would be a huge signing for Newcastle United but I do believe it would be the correct one to make I think lots of Newcastle United fans, although they've seen the club rapidly improve over the last year, I do think that they are potentially underwhelmed in terms of their attacking options. Once again, the only attacking option they've really brought in is Chris Wood, but once again, Chris Wood isn't a world-class striker, I hate to say it. Yes, he could have a huge impact on the club in terms of the EFL Cup. Obviously, he just helped them and he scored a goal recently in the EFL Cup. But at the end of the day, they do need a top-quality striker in his prime, or at least working towards his prime, if they really want to go anywhere. Once again, 70 million euros, it is a lot to ask. But once again, Newcastle United, being in this new era of football it is a risk that I believe that they are willing to take and they are able to take as I said looking at the improvements of this club it is easily the biggest improvements I've ever seen from a club over a year of football well maybe bar Leicester City obviously that season that they won the Premier League but once again at the end of the day you look at a team like Newcastle United you look at the form there and you look at the teams that they're going to be competing with for those European spots and I think they've got a really solid chance I mean if you put them in categories with the Leicester City with West Ham United with Wolves with Leeds with all of those teams like Aston Villa that could be in that mid-table spot I think Newcastle United could overtake teams like that once again it'll all go down to whether they can kind of break into the top six whether they can overtake a Manchester United a Tottenham Hotspurs an Arsenal one of those teams once again it is a very long Premier League season still up ahead we're going to have to wait and see but it is still 
very, very early days. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you did enjoy this video. Once again, yes, a very short video just talking about Newcastle United and what they could potentially achieve this season. Once again, as I said, I think that they could potentially end up in a very, very exciting place. I mean, once again, maybe they do still need one or two more signings. I believe another midfielder would be crucial for the club. Once again, and maybe another right winger would also be crucial because at the moment, they've only got players like Almiron and Ryan Fraser, who don't get me wrong, on their gate, they can definitely turn up. But once again, at the end of the day, I wouldn't say those players are really going to get you anyway. I wouldn't say that those are really Premier League players. No, no. He's got a point. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you have enjoyed this video. As I said, let me know in the comment section down below, what do you think Newcastle United can achieve this season? Could they achieve Europe? Could they not? Let me know your thoughts and opinions. Of course, don't forget to subscribe as we are on the road to 10,000 subscribers. If we could hit it by the end of the year, that would be absolutely massive. Can we please help achieve that? And of course, like the video if you did end up enjoying. Guys, this has been Finn, FY double N. Until next time, cheers.